hello friends uh, today is my 30th presentation and the subject is developing the coding schemes uh, for the real estate industry the concepts in this uh, scheme are equally uh, applicable for any other industry <clears throat> by the coding scheme i mean not the software coding but the scheme for the for example for the coding scheme for the vendors customers processes etc <clears throat> What I plan to include in this presentation is what is the purpose of coding scheme, the suggested nine steps and activities for developing the coding schemes, a few illustration of the coding scheme for the business entities, an illustration for the coding scheme for the business objects, uh, way forward and future references. I am going to share uh, what is the meaning of business entity and business objects. Purpose of coding schemes. In any business there are many entities and objects as listed below. Entities are, for example, vendors, customers, employees, shareholders, and so on and so forth. Objects are like materials, finished products, business documents like purchase orders, invoices, accounting documents, and so on and so forth, and the processes and the activities. Now, coding schemes <coughs> enable the accomplishment of the following objectives. Number one, providing a standardized and a structured way of identifying and categorizing the different entities and objects. They <coughs> enable efficient way of accessing the entities or objects from the digitization perspective. They help in efficient storage and retrieval of the data by digitization. They help in organizing and classifying the business data as useful information. For They enable efficient management of the business operations and they help in maintaining records and tracking of these. Now, Suggest nine steps and activities for developing the coding schemes. Forming a cross-functional team or called CFT. Nominating an uh, organization level coordinator and assigning responsibility for coding of entities or objects. Here, uh, uh, this may be called, the organization level co coordinator may be called here as the agency. Uh, number three is deciding the coding scheme structure in terms of number of digits and the types as alpha or numeric or numeric or alpha. This I will explain in the with few examples. Based on the coding structure, assign coding codes to each type of the entity and object as an alternative to fourth activity, providing a solution for generating the random code numbers through computer. For example, in the case of materials, um, the code numbering could be say starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like and so on and so forth, uh, uh, the number assigned by us. But there are solutions available where this uh, numbering can be generated as random from the computer. Uh, point, action uh, activity number six is incorporating the codes assigned to the previous activity in the uh, respective ERP package application package at the pre, pre implementation stage uh, of chosen ERP package solutions. Uh, deciding the following the processes, activities, and documents for requisitioning future incremental additions to codes. In the case of a business design, identifying function-wise levels and positions of the person who can acquisition, approve and communicate codes to all concerned functions for implementation in the respective ERP package. It means basically assigning a person uh, uh, by name and better option is to instead of giving a name, giving a level or the position. Uh, uh, activity number 8 is periodic review of the re uh, and redesign of the coding schemes or enhancing the coding schemes. And uh, last, next point is after testing and finalization of the coding scheme, providing training and implementing the coding schemes across the organization. Now, illustration for the coding schemes entities. Here I have given uh, four uh, <coughs> columns. Column number one is head, which lists down the entities. Column number two is categories for the classification. Uh, category three is the, what is the suggested structure uh, in terms of number of digits for the coding scheme. and uh, last column is illustration. For example, uh, we have vendors of different categories. This could be supplier, domestic, consultant, domestic, contractor, domestic, uh, service provider, domestic, supplier, overseas. So here I am proposing a scheme of which will have five digits. The first one is the uh, uh, the first two are the <coughs> uh, alphabetic. The first one indicates, for example, V means vendor, A, B, C, D is means the type of this. And the continuous number is after that the first vendor code uh, here will be VA001, the next will be VA002, third will be VA003 and so on and so forth. 
in the case of consultant it is vb001 this is 02 and so on so forth likewise for all other uh, categories in the case of employees the <coughs> different categories uh, or classifications are like employees who are local and uh, residents uh, number 2 employees who are for uh, foreigners uh, and number 3 is employees who are temporary uh, still not uh, uh, made permanent so here this suggested scheme is six digit which is ea 001 e indicates employee and uh, a b c category indicate the employees which is local and foreigner and uh, temporary respectively and employee code is uh, 00001 onward to 2345 it can go into 99999 <coughs> uh, similarly for the customers for different categories there can be uh, project customers in the case of real estate and uh, this can be end customers this can be real estate agents this can be underwriter this can be institute customers and so on so forth and here the coding scheme is six digits comprising of two alpha uh, two alpha numeric uh, two alpha and four uh, 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 five numeric a uh, four numeric sorry so this is cg triple zero one for the uh, uh, for the project customers who are end customers like the uh, uh, occupant of the uh, res residential apartments uh, real estate agent is ch001 001 002 and so on and so forth underwriters as ci001 and cj as institute customer uh, 1 2 3 4 and so on and so forth here uh, likewise we can have many other business entities besides vendors employees and customers for example we can have shareholders investors statutory bodies etc etc and organizations have of course the 100% flexibility to design their own coding schemes uh, which could be of any number of uh, digits they could be of uh, alpha numeric or alpha only or even all numeric also now next this slide is regarding the listing for the coding scheme for the objects here the first column is the head the type of the object the categories the number of digits and the illustration in column number 1 2 3 4 respectively for example, the first one is uh, defining a, uh, uh, classifying a function and team. There are there are many functions within an organization. For example, purchase functions, HR functions, project function, design function, and so on and so forth. And within that, there are different teams. For example, in the case of uh, design, there can be team for uh, architecture, team for interior designing, team for MEP, and so on and so forth. Team, for example, in the case of project, uh, for the case of materials, can be purchase function or store function or uh, dispatch uh, rejection store function and so on and so forth so here one is proposing the number of digit as 6 and pr02 represents one particular type of function out of many project functions and t01 indicates the team number 1 so it can be t01 t02 t03 uh, and so on and so forth so this you will you will please appreciate that in the function and team for the coding scheme for this uh, you know you can have as many as 99 uh, uh, function and sub functions and within each function you can have as many teams as you wish say up to 99 t01 t02 and so on so forth this is so it is pretty flexible core activities in a business there are there are uh, uh, hundreds of activities within each function so here one is proposing uh, a, a coding scheme for the core activities like it is designing or procurement or contracts or uh, or uh, hr team etc there are kind of different activities uh, so the first one indicates the uh, activity a and uh, the next one is for example 2601 or 2602 2603 of course it will start with 0001 but uh, i am just giving example which is picked up from the my book uh, where there are several examples given uh, these are given in my uh, website uh, these examples of these Similarly, for the statutory activities, uh, uh, the uh, scheme suggested is six digit, and this is AU. Uh, just indicates a differentiation between the core and statutory is AU followed by four digit one two zero one. It can be zero 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 one. It can be zero 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 two. Here I have taken twelve zero one, twelve zero two, twelve zero three, etc. And so on and so forth. So the, the, you can please appreciate that large number of activities whether it is core activities or strategic activities up to 9999 little less than 10,000 these can be accommodated in this scheme now BOQ materials in the case of real estate 
uh, the, uh, the there can be different kind of materials used for the structure packages, so for the sewage packages, for the MEV packages, I mean consumables and so on and so forth. And there are different 30, 40, 50, 60 type of different packages within this, uh, 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 within the uh, real state function. So, uh, no, so what uh, here I am proposing a digit, uh, seven digit scheme. The first two indicate the uh, package. For example, QA indicates the structure package, QB indicates the civil package, and so on and so forth. So, here uh, I, I am proposing five digit codes because the number of materials within each structure package can run into hundreds and thousands. So, I am proposing very large number of uh, options available uh, so that we do not get exhausted for assigning codes to the new different kind of uh, materials. For example, QA0001, it could be uh, one type of uh, <coughs> uh, one type of cement, it could be one type of uh, uh, bar, it could be anything. So, I am just giving just examples for your reference. Now, in the case of assets and capital, similarly, there can be different types like land, building, plant and machinery, furniture, vehicles and so on and so forth. Here also, here I am proposing uh, a scheme of uh, five digits. Uh, for example, A indicates the land, BB indicates the building, uh, AC, AC indicates the plant and machinery and so on and so forth. And the next uh, next uh, uh, digits, they indicate the code number, uh, the, the continuous serial number, continuous serial number. So, here uh, it is flexible that we have to give the range within each type of uh, uh, each type of the coding scheme like in the case of BOQ materials uh, b, uh, besides QA, QB, QT, uh, QU, uh, one has to give the range whether the range is from uh, uh, 5 digit or 6 digit depending on the total volume of uh, coding expected. Similarly, in the case of assets, I have given 4 digit uh, and this thing, uh, 0001 to 991 and so on and so forth. Now, then for example, the next example of the object is uh, core documents. There can be different kind of uh, documents within the organization, design document, purchase document, accounts document and so on and so forth. So, here I am proposing a 5 digit scheme and uh, here the document type is uh, D1201 where D can indicate a, for a particular function what are the main uh, different kind of documents starting for example, design function. Uh, for example, uh, accounts function, etc. And one to within that, uh, there can be 1201 uh, different types of documents which are there. Uh, by type means are the very different type of documents. But but the within a within a year within a year, the number of uh, documents can run from one to thousands and thousands within each type. For example, there can be a large number of purchase orders. There can be large number of invoices. So that is given in the last. Uh, four digits which I have indicated. So, but uh, large organizations which are MNCs, they can have this instead of having five digits, they can have nine digits, ten digits, depending on the overall annual volume of uh, documents likely to be uh, 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 used. For example, in the case of finance and accounts, there can be very large number of uh, watchers. So, so one has one can use these, uh, uh, one can have the flexibility of increasing this number of digits from five to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc, etc. So, likewise, there are can be many other uh, documents, fields, configuration tables, data tables, master data tables, etc. So, each one of these need to be coded with appropriately. And as already mentioned, organization have got the 100 plus 100 percent flexibility to design their own coding schemes or implementing uh, schemes which are driven by the ERP packages and uh, software they use. Only thing is that within that, within the coding structure which is proposed by the software or the ERP package they use, they have to design the uh, number of, uh, they have to design the uh, coding scheme. Now, above, uh, the above proposed coding schemes are only for the conceptual understanding and the as design of coding schemes can be designed, altered at the absolute discretion of the organization and the coding structure can be 100 percent alphabetic, it can be 100 percent numeric or hierarchical as felt appropriate. Uh, I know for example, for sure that for the case of materials, the uh, the uh, most often the uh, material coding is absolutely numeric. 
uh, and so on and so forth. In the, in the uh, for example, in the case of accounts, normally they have alphanumeric, the first digit representing the type of document like customer document or uh, material document or JV, etc. And this followed by subsequent code uh, uh, numbering and depending on the what is the estimated volume per year in a financial year. Uh, so these uh, number of digits can be appropriately increased or decreased for higher or lower volumes of business activities. Usually coding schemes are driven by the software solution and the ERP solutions used by the organizations. Irrespective of the design of the coding scheme chosen, the following must be ensured before the coding schemes are implemented. Uh, number one, the, the coding scheme must be well documented uh, and um, uh, well documented for who is going to design, who is going to approve this, who is going to requisition this code, a new code is required for example for a new employee or um, for example you need a uh, new code for uh, BOQ for a particular uh, uh, package uh, material, uh, then who is going to requisition this, then who is going to finally approve and communicate this, the coding schemes to different people across the organization. And uh, uh, of course it is very very important that uh, the providing uh, training to the users of the coding schemes across the organization at different uh, uh, the different uh, uh, teams because when the new uh, employees join they may not be familiar with that coding scheme so it is important that uh, orientation for the coding scheme is also uh, done for the new employees and uh, of course the compatibility of the coding scheme structures in the software and ERP package for example if the uh, if the ERP package chosen uh, mandates uh, mandates not really mandate uh, states that expects that the, uh, the number of digit cannot exceed uh, uh, 9 and you decide to have a coding scheme of 11 so this may not be fitting the uh, software use so it is desirable to uh, have the scheme structure aligned to the uh, structure proposed by the uh, ERP package uh, or the software ERP package I means whether it is a Microsoft Dynamics or whether it is a Barn or whether it is a Oracle or whether it is a uh, SAP etc etc. Now you can find more details about this in chapter 9 in my handbook and uh, there are several examples I have given uh, in lecture 33b at the website uh, uh, where you can find more examples of this uh, uh, coding done for different kind of uh, different examples real life examples. And my book is titled as Ethics in the Real Estate and Hospitality Industry Volume 1 for uh, Architectural Interior and MVP Designs. You can also refer to uh, one of my blogs, uh, the reference which I have given in this uh, slide. Uh, you can also refer to my Facebook uh, and LinkedIn uh, uh, addresses given here. And book is available in the Kindle format or paperback edition and also in few retail outlets in India's major cities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.